Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is now over a year old, and many members of the community are playing Ultimate as their very first Smash game. For those of us who played previous Smash installments, we certainly know that a lot of things change from one game to the next. The first thing most of us looked for when transitioning from Smash 4 to Ultimate was changes in game mechanics. Smash Ultimate sped up the gameplay compared to Smash 4 and Brawl, adding the new balloon knockback as well as cutting down lag frames on many attacks and changing initial dash to make Foxtrot dash dancing more practical. The new directional air dodge initially excited us at the potential for wave dashing, which turned out to be impractical. After getting a feel for the new mechanics, the natural thing to look at next was characters, and while some still play more or less exactly as they did in Smash 4, others have seen significant changes and jumped places on the tier list. In this video, we'll be focusing on the top 10 most changed characters from Smash 4 to Ultimate, looking at what has changed and how it affected them. If you'd like to learn more about every character in the game, check out ProGuides.com. On our website, you'll find our tier list with guides and tips for each character, instant access to coaches with our Play With Pros feature, and exclusive video courses taught by pros like MKLeo himself. Diddy Kong was among the best characters in Smash 4. Upon release, he gained instant infamy for his notorious hoo-ha combo, wherein he could combo down throw into up air and confirm KOs with this setup at unreasonably low percents. Even after being nerfed heavily, Diddy Kong continued to see incredible results, with Zero going on a record-setting 56 tournament win streak while maining the character. His consistent throw combos, incredible neutral game thanks to banana punishes, great foxtrot, and down tilt KO confirms made Diddy a constant threat even after the release of the meta-dominating DLC titans Bayonetta and Cloud. Smash Ultimate's Diddy doesn't seem very different on the surface, but many subtle changes go a long way to reduce this character to a lackluster mid-tier. For starters, Smash Ultimate's mechanics make Diddy less effective in general. The fast-paced neutral granted from Ultimate's dash dancing removes the edge from Diddy's banana pressure, and the reduced landing lag makes it harder for him to whiff punish with down tilt. Many of Diddy's hitboxes also received size nerfs, and his banana is less effective on shields. Although his recovery has been buffed since Ultimate's release, his up B still travels less distance than it had in Smash 4. Some of the changes did buff Diddy, however. His banana now doesn't disappear after only hitting an opponent once, which creates new combo routes and even unlocks an infinite combo that can be performed on platforms. If Ultimate is your first Smash game, then you've always seen Palutena as one of the best characters in the game. Well, in Smash 4, Palutena was actually straight up bad. Like, she was legitimately a low tier. So how did a character go from being one of the worst in the game to one of the best? In Smash 4, Palutena had lots of lag on almost all of her moves, and because of this, she had very few combos and her neutral was very committal. Her special moves did not include Explosive Flame, and instead divided her counter and reflect into down and side special respectively. Otherwise, her moveset was basically the same, but cooldown frame data goes a long way. The reduction of landing lag on her aerials in Smash Ultimate is what makes nearly all of Palutena's combos possible, especially her infamous Nair Chains. This also makes her neutral far more capable, with low commitment on forward air and back air that she can use to space out her opponents. Ultimate consolidated her reflect and counter to make them one move, and Explosive Flame was borrowed from Palutena's custom moves in Smash 4. What were custom moves, you ask? Don't worry about custom moves. You don't need to know about custom moves. But yeah, Palutena's top tier now, so that was quite a jump. If you're new to Smash Ultimate, you probably haven't seen too much of Wii Fit Trainer, but if you were around for Smash 4, well, you still wouldn't have seen much of her. Wii Fit just isn't a commonly played character in general, but in Smash 4, it was largely because she was pretty bad. She was slow, didn't have many combos, she was particularly poor at approaching, and struggled to close out stocks besides for edge guards. Most Wii Fit players would actually just camp at the ledge, cause ledge plank was one of the only things she was good at. In Smash Ultimate, Wii Fit's moveset is very similar, but in addition to having great damage output from her combos, her deep breathing was buffed significantly. Deep breathing now noticeably increases Wii Fit's ground speed and fall speed, while boosting her damage and KO potential to deadly levels. This aids in Wii Fit's ability to secure stocks, and makes her existing options far more threatening. Despite having little representation in tournaments, Wii Fit is labeled as one of the best sleeper characters in the game. You can check out our video on that subject to learn about more characters we think are sleepers. Bowser hasn't jumped too far on the tier list, but his redesign in Ultimate completely changes the main goals of his playstyle. 
Wild. At the beginning of Smash 4's life, Bowser was fairly irrelevant, struggling with the common issues of a big body with poor disadvantage state. This was interesting, as he had been seen as a very strong character in pre-release events for the 3DS version, but once players got used to the game after its release, Bowser fell down quite far. Fortunately for Bowser players, he was eventually buffed, earning a reliable combo throw which his entire meta would change to revolve around. Bowser's up throw worked as a combo throw, from low percents all the way to KO percents where it would combo into his up air for a confirm that was nicknamed the Koopa, referencing Diddy's hoo-ha. Coupled with Bowser's insane pivot grab range, most of his gameplay became searching for grabs. In Smash Ultimate, Bowser's up throw up air at KO percents was removed, leaving only some lower percent up throw combos to build up damage. His pivot grab range is also toned down a bit, but in return, Bowser received some very notable buffs. His side B was quickened to frame 6, and the mechanics changes of Ultimate allow up B out of shield to be an even more incredible defensive option. This makes it very scary to pressure Bowser's shield, as he can up B to punish many moves or quickly grab with side B if you shield anticipating his up B. His flying slam side B also racks up lots of damage and KOs, so a lot of his gameplay revolves around these two options. The reduced jump squat frames and landing lag in Ultimate allow him to space aerials more effectively, so he can also play more fundamentally in general. Sheik is an interesting case. In Smash 4, Sheik was a bona fide top tier in the early meta, racking up consistent damage with fair strings, dominating the neutral with her amazing frame data and needles, and closing out stocks with up air and bouncing fish confirms. Zero brought Sheik great tournament success, co-maining her when Diddy Kong was nerfed. He eventually dropped the character when her fair hitbox, needle range, and KO confirms were nerfed, but Void and Mr. R continued to get strong results with Sheik. In Ultimate, Sheik still lacks KO confirms, and her already underwhelming damage output and knockback hold her back even more when compared to the majority of characters in Ultimate who can tack on damage very quickly. Ultimate Sheik loses almost every trade and struggles to come back from a stock deficit. She is a prime example of how a change in game mechanics with only a few subtle nerfs can completely change a character's tier list position. Ganondorf sees the opposite result from Ultimate's mechanics. In Smash 4, Ganon was very low on the tier list, held back by slow mobility lots of cooldown and landing lag, and an exploitable recovery. In Smash Ultimate, Ganon received few specific changes besides for his smash attacks which now use a sword, but his neutral and combos are noticeably better. This is mostly due to Ultimate's universal decrease in jump squat and landing lag. Now, Ganondorf can whiff nares in neutral to control space, combo aerials out of down throw, and space fares and bears safely. The change to his smash attacks also helps him cover landings and ledge options with a massive disjoint that can KO very early. Ganon is still not one of the better characters in the game, but the new mechanics make him far more capable. Wario in Smash 4 relied on many more tricks and struggled to use conventional aerial spacing and boxing options. His aerials were laggier and offered far less reward, so he instead used the bike more often and went for setups like down throw into dash attack, which was a different move that could actually jab lock. Although his waft was just as strong, it was much harder for Wario to set up for it, and in a two-stock game, he had less time to charge it. In Smash Ultimate, Wario's Aerials can start reliable combos at many percents, including multiple confirms into his waft. The reduced landing lag improves his neutral and aids in his combos as well. Wario's new dash attack is another KO option that can be comboed into from down tilt or late fair, and his forward tilt can two frame and KO as well. Wario has seen amazing tournament results in Ultimate, jumping all the way up to top tier or high tier at worst. Zero Suit Samus was the character to end Zero's tournament win streak in Smash 4, with Nairo representing the character and winning multiple tournaments with her. Smash 4 Zero Suit had an amazing grab game with consistent down throw combos at various percents. Her down throw could set up multiple up airs which then led into her up B. Due to Smash 4's more prominent rage and how it affected high base knockback connecting hits, rage up B could KO at extremely early percents and made ZSS a phenomenal comeback character. In Ultimate, Zero Suit grab combos are non-existent, with tons of lag added to her down throw. Her up air combos can still lead to up B, but the fixes to rage connecting hits make this move unlikely to KO off the top. Also, Zero Suit's previously useless up smash now starts combos and KOs, and her side B goes back to being a KO option as it was in Brawl. Despite losing her main strengths, Zero Suit's movement and pressure still make her a solid character with great results played by Mars. 
Cloud changed the Smash 4 metagame upon his DLC release, dominating most matchups with his immense disjointed range and unparalleled up air juggles. His limit allowed him to control the pace of the game and granted immense KO power to his special moves. In Smash Ultimate, Cloud's range was universally nerfed, with some players going as far as to compare his sword to a toothpick. Most notably, his up air is no longer a practical landing option to hit grounded characters, which was one of his main combo starters and neutral tools in Smash 4. Cloud's limit now disappears after 15 seconds if not used, and limit specials are weaker. Since it connects better and can no longer be teched, a big part of Cloud's gameplay is using his up B out of shield to punish pressure. The up B also has less lag, making it a bit tricky to whiff punish at times. Due to these changes, Cloud plays quite a bit differently in Ultimate, and drops from what was likely a top 3 character to a high tier at best. Whether you played Smash 4 or not, you probably know that Bayonetta was the best character in that game. Not only only was she the best in the game, but she completely changed its meta. No, let me rephrase that. She destroyed Smash 4's meta. Bayonetta's ridiculous combos carried characters across the stage with a one-way ticket to the blast zone of the Bayonetta player's choice. Against any Bayo who knew how to combo properly, it was essential that you attempted to destroy your control stick in order to smash DI out. And that didn't even work every time. Bayo could set up for her combos from most of her moves, especially the giant hitbox on her up B, which was frame 4 and could be performed out of shield, and if you were lucky enough to survive, you'd come out with plenty of damage added on. Her aerials were very safe, and up air or Nair's bullet extension didn't add any additional lag. Her witch time counter would literally freeze you for enough time for the Bale player to taunt and hit you with a charged smash attack. In a game without taunt cancelling. The meta developed into one where almost every top player either mained Bayo or pocketed her. It was pretty hard to escape Smash 4 Bayonetta. And not just her combos. Anywho, Ultimate Bayonetta is Sakurai's way of saying, <laughs> I'm watching, as she received considerable nerfs. Her combo potential is nerfed overall, with smaller hitboxes, less reliable knockback, and slower frame data. Landing lag on bullet art aerials is increased, Fair 1 no longer links into anything but Fair 2, too, and which time freezes the opponent for much less time. Bayonetta still has a strong combo game and excellent recovery, but she tends to be underrated due to just how far she's dropped from her former glory. Is Ultimate your first Smash game? If not, who did you main in Smash 4 and how do they hold up in Ultimate? Let us know in the comments and make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and turn on notifications to keep up with more uploads.